First name. Micaela. Juan Carlos. Last name. Topalian. Topalian. Who's your father? Juan Carlos. <laughs> Who's your daughter? Here. When did you attend our Satori school? So I started in 2022 and I graduated 2024. 19 was in 1977 and 1979. Show an issue of the Arstoria magazine from when you attended school. So, this is the issue number 484 of the Arstoria school magazine. Okay. That was the magazine. Okay. Number 122. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Who was your teacher? Oh, I had so many. <laughs> All of them. Um, in Shu, I've had Andrea, I've had Marta, I've had Milena, I've had Sergio, I've had Francesca. All of them. Fantastic people. Adriano Lunati. Mr. Adriano Lunati. What job you do or what job you would like to do? I would like to explore a role in design, definitely, but since I started learning the more technical parts of shoemaking and bag making, that became very interesting as well. So I'm trying to um, see if product development is something that I would be interested in, but since I, I'm still getting into the field, I'm open to everything, quite frankly. <laughs> Right now, uh, what I'm doing is uh, working on development in general line, okay? since design until production all that way belongs to my responsibility right now. What is the most important thing you learn at Arsutoria? Oh, that's a hard one. Um, I would definitely say the technical part for sure. I think everything was really important, but my philosophy as a designer is that not only you have to be able to create the products and express yourself as a designer, but you have to know how everything is going to actually be made um, because, and it might sound cliche, but like a lot of people can create, but I think being able to create something that is going to be something is the most, that's what being a designer is, that's what solving it problems is. So definitely the technical part and definitely exploring myself as a designer as well because I come from fashion design. So being able to do shoes was a completely different territory for me. Um, and it was definitely a lot of fun. But yes, definitely the technical part, I would say. Mm. <laughs> Actually, so many. Uh, first of all, was the technical part. Uh, but after that, uh, Arsutoria gives me more skills, okay, uh, and that means aesthetically point of view, stylish point of view, uh, and how this could be and has to be combined just to achieve a great product. I do have to, if I can, like, uh reply to that, because I think that the aesthetic part of things is also very very important. I think that the way that the uh, instructors here get you used to the right proportions and to the right curves and to knowing what's wrong with some stuff, again, aesthetically, it's very, very important. And I think that's basically why Italian design is such a big deal, is just the knowledge about shapes and how everything should be harmonically working. So yeah, I would agree with that too. What aspect of your experience at Arstoria most impressed you and helped you or, or you think will help you most in your work? 3D. <laughs> For sure, 3D. And it's funny because I've had the hardest time and yet the best time because 3D is honestly such a vast 
universe and you can do pretty much everything that you want with it so it as as challenging as it was it was as fun basically um and also again the instructors were incredible they made sure that we had a great time learning these things because they know how technically complicated it can be so so yes i think i would say the 3d part was the most challenging yeah oh uh, okay uh, going back uh for me, Arsutoria was a kind of starting point, okay? Uh, because it was before Arsutoria, after Arsutoria, okay? Uh, and, and really happened. Uh, what Arsutoria gave me to me, beside the knowledge, of course, is the, uh, the change in my mind, the way I, how I need to think, uh, the way how I need to look the things and this is uh, one of the things like Arsutoria gave me so important of course all the technically all the aesthetic part whatever but it's something like that uh, uh, make my mind change completely okay. something more professional Definitely. And something like gives me uh, Arsutoria was the feel like to be proud for whatever you are doing. Okay, this is has to be you, you need to put something from you there. You know, it's not just a job. You know, this is beautiful. And that was I learned here, definitely. Show us one of your works done at Arsutoria. Okay, so I do have my final prototype for the bag and I also have my heel. Okay, so just to introduce and explain this one, because since the prototype is not done, it's being worked on at the moment. <laughs> um, this is a heel that came from the collection development in which I did my collection and design all my shoes. So this was my main idea. Um, and here at the school, we were able to develop the 3D model and then print it in the 3D machine. Uh, of course, again, making sure that it would fit with the last, uh, with the insole and that everything would work perfectly and that I could wrap it in leather and do it as I wanted with my final design. So this is the wedge heel for my final prototype. The final shoe, you're going to have to wait and see. It's coming. It's a launch. And then the bag. So this is my final prototype for the bag course. Um, can I go ahead and talk about it? Oh, okay. So this is a baguette bag. Um, we developed also the metal in the front. So I 3D modeled this and we outsourced it with a supplier. Um, on the sides, you can see that the straps follow um, fall, actually fall uh, lower because they are all adjustable. So we were able to develop this mechanism in which you can adjust the strap and wear the bag in different ways. So you can pull it and then click it on the side. And yes, I'm very happy with the result. <laughs> it was a really, really fun time doing this one. And yes, these are my product. <laughs> when you start to do something, and this is the beautiness of this professional this uh, this job uh, for example you can do and make it happen whatever you have in your mind and then you come to reality this is beautiful you can see technique you can see dedication and yeah this is one of my proud <laughs> this is one what place in milano are you most attached to oh. This is a really, really hard question because Milan has so many incredible places. Definitely my house, because I was so lucky to find it, but also Sempione, I would say, because, uh, well, I think being connected with nature is always going to be a positive thing. I think it's always going to be good to center you. And Sempione really helped me to do that in a lot of moments in which I was anxious or not feeling that uh great about everything and 
yeah, I also think that it has the mixture of Milan, which I really love with the modern and the contrast with the really classic, like the buildings all around, but then you have Arco della Pace in the center. So it's, to me, it's one of my favorite places, definitely. Okay. Uh, okay, not easy. Not easy to say. Uh, there is so many places. Actually, the culture, everything here, good taste. You know, it's, it's all around. You can feel just in the street. But if I, uh, okay, I'm going to choose uh, my classic one, favorite. It's uh, all around uh, Piazza Duomo, uh, Vittorio Emanuele, uh, the gallery. That, that is amazing. It's, uh, it's a kind of jewel okay, in my perspective. And then uh, Monte Napoleone. I feel so comfortable walking there. So, yes, but uh, Milan has uh, so many places and so many things. Greet everyone in your language. Oi, pessoal. Eu poderia dizer, I could say bom dia, but that depends on the time zone that you're at. So, oi, pessoal. Prazer. <laughs> okay. Hola para ustedes. Mucho gusto. <laughs> y un buen día. Now greet everyone in Italian. Well, that's easy because it's ciao, so <laughs> it's going to be ciao, ciao. <laughs> ciao e ci vediamo. <laughs> e ci vediamo. <laughs>